Good evening. Welcome to the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. My name is Michael Lerman. I'm the co-lead on special presentations. And welcome to Waves. To begin with, I'd like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. I will leave it. Um, and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. And we are so thankful to be working in the community today and every day of every year. Yes. As part of, as part of TIFF's uh, commitment to engaging youth, in the festival programming. This film has been selected by the Next Wave community, uh, Committee. Yeah! <laughs> Stand up! <laughs> um, for the next generation of film lovers, Next Wave is supported by the City of Ontario and Ontario Arts Council. Can I get a round of applause for them too? The film is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award. You can go to tiff.net slash vote and vote for it there. And I suspect you will. Um, of course, before I say anything else, I need to thank our incredible partners at A24 who've made this happen and so many other great movies happen. God, I don't even know where to begin. This is like, for us as a programming team, this was such a special experience. Um, Trey Edward Schultz is a filmmaker who we've obviously been following since Krisha. Does anybody see that movie? And a little, a, a little movie called It Comes at Night. Did anybody? <laughs> but even all of that could not prepare us for what you're about to see tonight. Um, it is propulsive and electric and so human in every way possible. And it's with my great pleasure that I bring to the stage right now, Trey Edward Schultz. Thank you, Michael. Uh, this is very surreal. There's a lot of y'all out there and I'm terrified right now. I think this is the biggest theater I've seen filled with people. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming out tonight. This is... This is humbling. Uh, I want to thank A24. I want to thank... Uh, A24, give a round of applause, please. We all know that. I want to thank this incredible film festival for having us here. Please, applaud. Humbled. Uh, and then I want to uh, I want to thank my producers as well, Jimbo and Kev. Uh, you're amazing. Give them an applause, please. Uh, What's happening? Over there? This is crazy. Uh, and then I want to bring out, uh, in my humble opinion, some of the best actors in the world. Um, uh, Alexa Demi, please come. Out. Woo! The goddess. Renee Goldsberry, get out of here. <laughs> Taylor Russell, come out here. Right? Calvin Harrison Jr. Woo! <laughs> Sterling K. Brown. Uh, there's some people that worked on this movie here tonight. Would you guys please stand up? Stand up wherever you are. I don't know where you are. Stand up. There we go. There we go.
this movie wouldn't be shit without the people that worked on this and this incredible cast. Uh, we put all our hearts and souls into this. Humbled, thank you for coming tonight so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please enjoy the movie. And we'll be back for a Q&A after. Okay. <laughs>
just pieces of things that you shot a lot more than this. Um, and I'm wondering, yeah. And I'm wondering, basically for everyone on this stage, what that, what that process was like working with Trey, working kind of figuring out your character, piecing together these little pieces, these little chunks of who you are and who everyone is and what this world is and what's happening. I love how everybody just like Take down it, the line. Take it. <laughs> um, like Trey said, yeah, I, I did this movie, this little movie horror film called It Comes at Night, and it's ringing. And, um, <laughs> and I was like, I, first of all, I couldn't believe that, you know, it was Joel Edgerton was the, you want that one? Oh, okay. And it was like my playing my dad, and I was like, I can't believe he's gonna cast me a, a little black boy to play Joel <laughs> son. And so I was like, this dude is different, you know what I mean? He really is like, he really, I don't know if you know if this is gonna fly, but I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> So I, when he finally started talking to me about this next movie, I was like, well, I don't know who, I was like, Joel Edgerton could play my dad again? Maybe Matt Damon? I don't know. You know <laughs> Anything could happen with Trey. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it was it, I just knew he was really open to the idea. That, oh man, this is killing me. Um, this, this, the, he had, he was a good listener. He was progressive. He was, he was really, he wasn't stuck to these, these ideas of what he knew from his own upbringing, his own childhood, and had to stick to that. He knew if I just listened to Kelvin because I believe in him as, a, as an actor and as a person, <laughs> I, I, could, I could truly write a story that was, that was honest and authentic and, and um, that, that we could kind of bridge that gap and narrow that line between white and black in this story and kind of see that this humanity goes so much further. So that was... That was like how I jumped into it, and then we started talking, like you said, and then they suddenly I was in a movie with SKB and Renee Elise Goldsberry, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that happened. Me? You're, you're pointing me to speak now? Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, working with Trey, I was, I haven't worked with a director before who really was, um, he, he gave, he gave me the opportunity to have the character and to do whatever I wanted with her. He had so much trust in me, uh, blindfully so, <laughs> perhaps at times, I don't know. Um, but it, I think it speaks to how good he is as an artist, as a director, to give, um, to just give you a lot of space, I think, and to trust you. And it's a true collaboration with Trey. Um, and that's really important, you know, because you don't, you don't get that a lot. There's a lot of micromanaging sometimes. And um, so it felt really open. It just felt like there was a lot of space in, in, in filming. And we shot so much. <laughs> We shot so much. Um, it's crazy. We the the like the road trip scene that you seen between Luke and Emily. Oh my gosh, it was three days. Those three days that we shot, and we were swimming with manatees and doing crazy things. The bus broke down. We were playing Kanye. We were running into the streets. It was just like it felt like a documentary in many ways. It felt really. I didn't know if the camera was filming us. It was so. Um, it was such a beautiful experience, right? Because it felt really uh, intuitive, I guess. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It was great. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was great. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think I'm kind of most amazed and super grateful that not only was, did he write my character, um, but that he, when we were filming it, kind of gave me the space to fill her out. Um, there's, he had a lot to do in this movie. <laughs> there, it's very ambitious. There is a, there's a story of a, a boy and a woman falling in love, and another woman and a boy falling in love, and a father, you know, loving them. In a Why is it boys and women? <laughs> There's two boys you know? and two women. 
and a dad loving in a very specific way. His and, woman. <laughs> this woman. And for him to um, have space in there for the mother meant a lot to me. And then to leave more space for me to find some development and to be able to work with Sterling. Believe me, he did not need a scene <laughs> partner really to bring ideas. Like he has so much there and he always was like leaving space for me. And, and then when I saw the film and I'm still here and we get to see this mother, this black woman mother who is responsible for some of this and hurt and hurting and and getting to see a moment where she actually tries to find some resolution i was i was grateful for all of those things because i feel these are things that need to be seen and um it's a it's a beautiful thing to be a part of this playing this mother with these young and i'm slender. still young <laughs> i'm still young baby i still got it Still got it. Beautiful. Here we go. Yeah. You want us all to? I, I was actually going to ask you, go you know, on. with shooting that much and staying in that, I can only imagine you have to kind of stay in character for days and days and days because, you know, with, with those long shoots and with things like doing a th three day road trip and stuff like that and trying to stay in that intense mindset. Was there some trick you had to detox to keep you, yourself sane, to keep yourself in place? I don't stay in it. Yeah. Um, kind of slippery. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, no, I, I, I am blessed to be able to, when I'm on set, be able to step into that space. And uh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> And, and when I'm not on set, you know, I inhabit another space. I think having uh, a wife and two kids who's like, Dad, why are you acting strange? Like, you can't carry it around with you the whole time. He's like, what are you trying to tell me to do? Like, my kid, like, didn't feel like if he had the space to have a conversation with me and couldn't speak back, he'd be like, well, is something wrong with you? Did, like, you need to go take a swim or something? Like, so I just have a really acute memory um, of what that kind of parent is, and not that it was my own father, per se, but fathers in my family. Uh, it's hard to carry around um, the whole time. And I actually find that the more intense the scenes are, the subject matter is, probably the goofier I become. Um, and like it took a while for like Kelvin to get used to me. He's like, how are you being so corny right now? Um, <laughs> It's because like, I, I couldn't exist in that space in totality all the time. Different actors, different processes, you know what I'm saying? Mine is sort of just trying to find the balance of it all. Yeah. I wanted to ask, um, you represent so much of, Alexa, you represent so much of the kind of light and love in the movie. It's just so much love. And I'm curious how much you guys spent time together workshopping your relationship before getting on screen because there's so much intensity and so much pain and you are the beacon of love in the first half of the film. Uh, Calvin and I uh, actually was the last person cast, so I didn't have that much time before going to Florida, so he made sure that we uh, spent a lot of time together beforehand. And we did workshop some stuff and I actually yeah, have never, did. yeah. <laughs> I actually have never, Not sure what that means, but um, <laughs> I actually never done that before with a with an actor, and he had me answering like all these like 50 questions and watching YouTube videos, and I think it really helped us get comfortable with each other. And then once we got there, um, I think it was just really nice because we both gave each other the space to just be as vulnerable as possible. And like they all said, Trey is so collaborative and understanding and genuine and kind and he gave us the space to be who we needed to be for the film and for so I'm a little emotional but for um for for most of it you hardly knew that he was even there you know like the camp like you did not even know the camera was there and that's not usual and it felt so real and and so beautiful and 
Unlike Sterling, I could not turn that off right away. I, I, I'll learn to, but it was a lot. But um, um, it, it allowed me to heal a lot within myself. And for that trip, I thank you for that. We have time for a couple audience questions. I'm going to go right here. So the question was about the visual style and including the shifting formats and how you developed it with your cinematographer and then also if it informed any specific moments for the actors. Uh, my Drew. cinematographer, Drew Daniels, is right yeah. there. You need to stand up. Stand, stand up. up, Drew! Uh, I mean, I, I honestly, like... Uh, yeah, there was a lot of stuff. Like, we had a schedule that some said was impossible and we couldn't do. And, ooh. and, uh, but, but it is like, Drew and I, since the first, th like, my Cretia short film, we've been working together and evolving and building. And I think we both kind of feel like this was a culmination of everything to that point. Um, and then really for the, for the style and everything between, what the camera's doing, the aspect ratios, it's all in service of the character. And for the first part, that's Tyler. For the second part, that's Emily. And everything, we're, even the music, everything we're doing is coming out from them and trying to get you closer to them and seeing everything through their eyes and feeling everything through, hopefully, this immersive emotional experience. Um, yeah, I don't, and then, f like, uh, it makes uh, very humbled when it feel when you guys feel like too that I created enough or we drew and I created enough space because we had like a dense shot list and all this camera stuff and everything we wanted to do. But at the end of the day, the movie wouldn't be shit without these guys. So like everything we did was still we never wanted to get in the way and was in service of y'all and like even like the opening shot and the 360 on the bridge. It was like figuring out how to do it camera-wise, but then letting them do their thing and kind of dance with them and learn and let it evolve, if that makes sense. It's so beautiful, I just want to say, to have been a part of a film and the shooting of it where they disappeared, and then to sit where you're sitting and see the movie and see how present they really were the whole time. I mean, it's a gift to us. We, we saw this movie and we realized that these two are beasts. <laughs> And, um, and we, are, we are just overwhelmed by visually what you were doing when we did not know it was happening. Overwhelmed. I have time for one more. I'm gonna go up in the balcony if there's one. Right here, yeah, in the front. So the question was the balance between the sad ending of Tyler and the happier ending of Emily. A absolutely, and it was all, always about the yin and the yang, and each half couldn't exist without the other, you know? And um, for me, uh, you know, we're in each of their heads and following them through this journey, and for me, when we get to the end of Tyler's half, personally, it's like the, ul the ultimate tragedy to me and the ultimate contemporary American tragedy in these circumstances. Um, and my heart breaks for everyone. But then to just end the movie there, uh, I don't know, it would feel wrong and too low. And it's like a, a big part is hopefully the movie, for some of Tyler's stuff, feels like a panic attack or something and feels like how this kid's feeling. But then the second half and through Emily, it's like the movie maybe holds you in, in its arms a little bit and takes you to another side and hopefully it's about, you know, life doesn't just end at the worst moment, it keeps going, you know, and it keeps going for different people and we have to, at least I've seen in my life so, so far, like when I get to the lowest points, it's like getting through the other side and rebuilding um, is a huge part to healing and it's a huge part to grief and it's a huge part to love because you have your highs and your lows, but that's what makes it everything and that's what makes it beautiful, I think. So it was always about getting to that lowest low and then hopefully getting up to, uh, feeling like you're on a road to growth, you know, if that makes sense.
Unfortunately, we got to turn over the theater, but I want to thank you all so much for thank coming. Thank you all so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Canada.